Rachel Joyce, uh, congratulations on a big day yesterday. It was uh, tough. You uh, you were leading and then uh, you felt the wind of Rennie Carfrey running past you. Just talk us through your day uh, with uh, with that in mind. Um, I, I mean, the day got off to a pretty good start. I mean, the pack, seemed, the front pack on the swim seemed to include half the women's field. Um, but it was, I felt pretty relaxed in it. It was pretty cruisy and then out onto the bike. That meant we just had a huge pack on the bike and it's kind of quite difficult when you've got that, you know, I kind of took it easy going through town because I think you can absolutely nail yourself. Is that, is that hairy? I, I often think that, you know, that little section through town in Polani, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's, it's very steep. It's very gnarly, that bottom corner. Yeah, I, I mean... You can't, it's a no overtaking zone, so I figure I might <laughs> annoy a few people behind me, but I'd rather get around it safe and um, onto the Queen K. And people go really hard you know, because it's a, there's a bit of a hill and you've got to get up Polani. So, and I did that last year and I looked at my power file and that probably, you know, I was ill, but it probably also was down to the fact I was kind of VO2 maxing up Polani. Um, then we had like a tailwind on the bike and it's, I kind of was looking at the group and there was about 12, 10 or 12 of us or something and I knew I wanted to cut that down a bit because, you know, I don't want 12 people in a foot race and there were some good runners there and, you know, a few people who were just sat in and not doing too much work so probably I wanted them to do some work. So I kind of just was patient and I knew that if we had a tailwind we'd get a headwind at some point and we got that um, coming down from Harvey and it, I'd always wanted to attack at some point um, so at, Caroline actually came past me and she kind of said you, you know, we have to go really hard now and then Michelle Vesterby also said we have to attack <laughs> so I attacked and no one came with me but it was kind of quite good because it forced everyone to up their pace to catch me again and you know I kind of then cruised for a little while and then when we got the next headwind just coming out of Kauai I went again and it wasn't it wasn't the big attack that you know the, my power didn't feel as hard as it had done coming down from Harvey but it was enough and it was just Meredith and Jodie had come with me and then we started to opening opening up some gaps and um, I felt pretty solid and Meredith was she was really strong on the bike and between us I think you know, we took some turns on the front, and we we got we got a, more of a gap. It, it was good to see because I think at Harvey we had information that Rini was only two minutes behind, and I wanted a bit more than that. I thought eight minutes may be enough, but it, <laughs> I think I needed about thirteen. So uh, w once you know that you're getting you're getting this information through, do you change? You, do you go to plan B for your race plan? You know that you're not doing enough to, to drop Rini substantially. I guess you, as you said, the gap was pretty pretty big at the end. But w what goes through your mind when you're hearing these time gaps of people having good days? Um, I wasn't too worried because I knew it. You know, when you've got a tailwind, it's fast for everyone, and you know there's only so many gears you've got before you're, you're spinning out. So. My game plan was always to really attack the second half of the bike and that's what I've been working on a lot in training and I'm confident that I can do that. So that was always, it, I wasn't really, you kind of react slightly but I was, I knew what I was capable of and you know, you take advantage of your strengths and so I wanted to have a strong back half. Caroline Stefan mentioned at the press conference the fact that she wanted more time between the men there was a five yeah. minute gap between the women's and men's pros and she said that wasn't enough good swimmers like yourself um and meredith etc really well picked off some of the 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 men yeah where's your where's your feeling on that um it would be nice to have no men i mean on the bike the men didn't interfere with our race at all and they were actually very good at kind of getting out of the way i think after last year they were probably conscious that they had impacted the women not those particular men but there had been an impact but in the swim it's it's a bit frustrating because you know suddenly you've you've caught up in a man the, the pack splits and then it's starting to inter, you know interfere I mean you can I mean in Melbourne I played on that because I used catching the men as a way to break away from the rest of the group so 
it would be nice to maybe have I think eight minutes should probably do it um, and then but I I would always be more concerned about the age groupers getting caught up in the back of the women's field so I'd, I don't want that gap to get any smaller and that has to be seven so yeah maybe a little bit longer and when uh, when you're running and uh, you know you're getting time splits you know Marinda Carfrey obviously has that pedigree of being the fastest runner that's ever run here and given yeah. some of the women who have been here before it's, it's pretty outstanding uh, again is it as a professional you you want to take that challenge on and and but what goes through your mind is the gap shrinking um trying not to panic um it was clear to me she was running really really fast because i wasn't running slowly mm -hmm. you know i was probably on a solid three hour pace i think um and yeah, I just focused on going as quickly as I could, as I could, and even when she went past me, I, I, I didn't think her, right, that's game over, I'm happy with second because it's an Ironman, you know, she may, may have blown up or anything, so I just kept pushing and I had kind of one of my better segments going through the energy lab and I kind of, she because she'd got a gap of two minutes at one point and I got it down to a minute 20, I think. And I was like, okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Um, but then she pulled away again. And um, yeah, by the time I got into town, you know, I knew I was in second and I just tried to enjoy and soak up the atmosphere. There's, um, there was this groundswell of Rachel Joyce love pre-race. And, <laughs> and I, I, we noticed it as well. And everyone kept saying that, you know, you were not prone to misadventure, i.e. injury or yeah. illness or anything. And you had this beautiful run in Texas. That you were supremely... Um, dominant in that race did you feel the pressure coming in and when journos ask you questions about opportunities of the year and stuff like that and <laughs> <laughs> which was us correct <laughs> do you feel the pressure coming into to that event um i actually felt pretty relaxed coming in um you know this year like i had a great race in texas but there's been a lot of frustrations with injuries and i you know, I didn't talk about it going into the race because I, I kind of like to have uh, short-term amnesia in the week coming up. So I almost like pretend it never even happened. And um, but I felt more relaxed because last year I felt so dreadful in the week <laughs> leading up, and it was just nice to kind of enjoy that week. And I felt happy and I felt relaxed. And um, my mindset was, you know, I'm just gonna. It's like a big, long, hard training day with other people and with, you know, a few more tactics thrown in. So, yeah. And I, I didn't really, I didn't really read much media going into it. <laughs> there's this also, there's been this, um, you know, a lot of talk on social media about drugs in sport and performance enhancing drugs. And uh, Lisa Hoosler has been the butt of many social media um, stabs and, and, yeah. and cracks. We've kind of, I mean, everyone knows our position who looks at our website that, you know, you can actually change and come back. You kind of were on the same wavelength yeah. as that. Where do you sit after all the year that's, that's been and, and where do you, do you still hold that opinion about people being able to make that comeback? Yeah, I do. I think um, people make mistakes and, um, you know, if you take it to, you know, people who commit crimes they go to prison they serve the time and then you know it's a clean slate and I don't think sport should be any different and it was for you know I felt a certain amount of frustration when you see someone like Virginia Beresetegui testing positive for EPO but uh, I don't I'm not gonna get hung up on it you know she's beaten me a couple of times here but what's the point it's a waste of energy she did it she probably feels worse for it and Lisa, I felt a bit uncomfortable. It feels a bit like there's been, it's almost like bullying on the media and I don't really want to be a part of that. Um, you know, she she took two years off and I would, I hate the thought of drugs in sport, um, but I'm, you know, I want to kind of give people a second chance. And um, this performance by Rini, you know, this third fastest run, yourself yeah. as well you were you know you, you you're part of this new kind of raft of athletes that are, that are floating up to the top end of Ironman racing Caroline's been there for a while 
this is obviously great for empowering women in sport and for giving them, you know, more of a platform, I suppose, as a, a, the men seem to obviously dominate due to just even sheer weight of numbers, you know, in, in triathlon. Yeah. For yourself and, for, and for, for Marinda, where do you think, what do you think this performance will do for you for that? Um, I think what we're seeing, you know, I think we're seeing like a real, the, the depth, the quality of depth, uh, has really improved mm. and I think we're seeing much more exciting racing and um, I think it can only be a, a good thing for the sport because there was so much there were tactics in the women's race and it, there was a lot of changing or you know I would have preferred really not to catch me a mile 14 but I can imagine it's exciting to watch um, and you know there was Liz getting uh, moving into third near the end you know I think it's it's good and it you know we're getting more coverage as a consequence because it's not just a time trial by one person um, and I think you know to a great degree the the leg one of the legacies Chrissy's left is that she set a standard and we've all been chasing that and um, we're now there's a lot more people at the top whereas it used to be maybe one or two now you've got like a handful or ten people that could you know yesterday if they'd have had a good day would have been in the top on the podium well we're talking the day after Kona and I'll ask you one last question um, it's probably not the time to ask it but <laughs> next year you know obviously the points you've bagged from this race are enormous um, yeah. what what do you what are your plans loosely for next year are you uh, gonna be uh, anywhere down our neck of the woods um, I, I love Melbourne. I loved mate racing Melbourne two years ago. I was a little watching it last year. I don't really want to. That's not my kind of race. Mm. Um, but that's not to say I won't be doing it. Mm. You know, I had such a great time, and I think it's an awesome event. Well, you hardly um, need the points anymore, really. I don't need the <laughs> points. Um, I'm not sure I want to race another Ironman this year either, though. Mm. So, and I want to do Challenge Roth. Um, so I will be looking at an early season Ironman. Well, um, again, you are you were fantastic yesterday. You've been great with us all week, and uh, I think everybody in the media really appreciated uh, how strong you were and, and how brave you were yesterday. So thanks for spending some time with us. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs>